Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at a really unique piece of technology from Walksnail. This is the Walksnail Avatar Repeater. And if you're using the Walksnail Avatar FPV system, what it does is it receives the video signal from your drone and it retransmits it to your goggles. This allows you to fly a lot further um, and also to do cool things like fly around corners where you don't have direct line of sight to the drone. This is a really cool piece of technology, but it is it has a lot of quirks and interesting limitations that you need to be aware of to know whether it's going to be right for what you want to do. So in this video, I'm going to be taking you through my testing of this piece of equipment. We're going to be looking at the latency that the repeater adds to the video link. We're going to be looking at the output power that the repeater transmits under and some limitations as to how you can use it and when it's going to be right for you. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. If at any point during this video, you decide that the Walksnail Avatar repeater is gonna be right for you and you wanna try one out, then there are links down in the video description to where you can pick yours up today. And they are affiliate links, which means that if you use those links, it does help support the channel, helps me make more videos like this, and it won't cost you anything. So please do use those links if you possibly can. Now let's have a look at the Walksnail Avatar repeater on the bench. All right, so here's the Walksnail Avatar repeater on the bench. And you can see that we have two sides to the repeater, a 5.8 gigahertz side, which is gonna receive the signal from the drone, and a 5.2 gigahertz side that is gonna retransmit that signal to your goggles. On the bottom, we have a quarter inch threaded hole, which you can mount to a standard camera tripod, like this one I have here and also a power port, which is a standard four pin um, JST 1.0 plug with two wires for power and two wires for ground. And you can see that I just soldered that to um, an XT60 connector so I can power it off a battery. And that's probably what I suggest you do as well if you're gonna be using this in the field. This will run from nine to 26 volts. So that's three to six S battery voltage if you're using a standard LiPo or four to six S lithium ion. And I would suggest that you use a four to six S battery for this, just to make sure that even if you run the battery down very low, this doesn't brown out and switch off. On the top of the VTX, we have the USB port, which you're gonna use for firmware updates and two bind buttons one button to bind to the drone, bind VTX, and one button to bind to the goggles, bind VRX. And using this, actually, when everything is set up with the goggles and the drone, it is really simple. You just power everything on, bind the drone with the bind VTX button, bind your goggles with the bind VRX button, and then it just works. So far, so simple, right? Well, this brings us to the first thing that you need to be aware of with this system, is that because it is transmitting on 5.2 gigahertz, you are gonna to need to make sure you have 5.2 gigahertz antennas for your Walksnail Avatar goggles. And that is a very non-standard thing. Fortunately, um, CADEX do sell 5.2 gigahertz Omni antennas for the Walksnail Avatar goggles, so you can buy directly from them, but I really haven't seen any other 5.2 gigahertz Omni antennas that are left-hand circularly polarized and fit an RPSMA connector anywhere. So, that's probably the best thing to do is when you buy the repeater, buy a set of 5.2 gigahertz antennas from CADEX at the same time. I'll put a link to those down in the video description. Once you've got all the right antennas and hardware, you're going to want to update the firmware on your goggles, drone and repeater to the latest version. And for the goggles and drone, that's just gonna be the standard process that you've done before. But for the Walksnail repeater, there is a little quirk with the firmware update process that I'm gonna go through with you now. Updating the firmware on the repeater is pretty simple once you know the trick. You're gonna plug the repeater in via USB, and then you're gonna power the repeater on with a battery. And at this point, you might be expecting a USB drive to appear on your computer. Now, in my experience, that will not happen. Um, the way to get the USB drive to appear is to hold down the bind VTX button for a few seconds until you see the whole uh, repeater system reboot. And once it does that, there we go, now the USB will appear on your computer. Once the repeater has reset, the USB drive will appear on your computer. And that's where you can drag and drop the image file to update the firmware on the repeater. So here I've just dragged the Avatar Relay 38.43.9 image into the USB drive. 
Once you've done that, you can unplug the USB and reboot the repeater to apply the firmware update. Once you have the image on the onboard flash storage of the repeater, just hold down the bind VTX button, just exactly as you would for the goggles or the FPV drone unit, and then the whole system will reset and apply the firmware update. So just keep holding it down until the whole thing reboots and you see a first flash of the red light. Now you can see the firmware update is being applied and that's why everything's flashing red. And in a little while, um, once the firmware update has been applied, these will go back to flashing green and then the firmware update is complete. Once the firmware update is complete, the bind VTX and bind VRX lights will stop flashing red and then you just need to power cycle the repeater. Once it powers back up, these two lights should start flashing green and that means that the firmware update has been successfully completed. After you've updated the firmware, you'll need to make some changes on the micro SD card that you're gonna use with your avatar goggles. You need to create a text file in the root of the SD card called avatar underscore STD. And inside that file, you need to have a line relay equals on. That's all you need, save that file. And then importantly, make that file read only so that it doesn't get deleted or overwritten. And that's all you need to do to get the relay working. And this brings us really neatly onto the second quirk with the avatar repeater system. The avatar repeater always connects directly to the drone and the goggles always connect directly to the repeater. What this means is that even if you're in a situation where you have good line of sight to the drone, the goggles won't connect to the drone directly. They will connect to the repeater and the repeater will connect to the drone, even if that signal is worse. If you want to switch back to connecting directly to the drone, you have to swap the antennas on the goggles back to 5.8 gigahertz antennas, and you have to change the text file on the SD card to relay equals off and then reboot the goggles. So you can't do it in flight. What this means is that you should think of the repeater as being exactly the same really as if you were standing where the repeater is for the purposes of range and penetration. So here's an example where we have the repeater on the top of an obstacle, it's connected to the goggles, it's connected to the drone. The video signal is gonna be pretty much exactly the same as if you were standing where the repeater is. So if you're standing on top of the obstacle, you get the same field of view as the repeater and you get effectively the same video signal. Where this gets really interesting is if you're not able to stand where you want to put the repeater. For example, you could put the repeater on another drone fly it up to a high altitude and get a bird's eye view of everything. You get a good connection to the goggles, you get a great uh, connection down to the drone because you're going over all the obstacles and there's no way you could stand on the ground where you could see the drone through all these obstacles. So you get much better video. And the reason this works is because ideally you would like to stand here, you know, up high in the air, but there's just no way you can do that. So the repeater allows you to um, pretend you're standing up there by attaching it to the drone and flying it to a high altitude. Also, you could put the repeater on some other kind of vehicle and move that vehicle around. Um, again, allowing you to always have a good connection to the drone in a situation where you couldn't physically move around. I think now is a good moment to talk about the VTX output power of the Walksnail repeater. And of course, I've measured this using my uh, bench setup. So we can look now at the VTX power output across all of the channels for the Walksnail repeater system. One of the things I noticed whilst testing the system is that you only get a choice of three channels for the 5.2 gigahertz transmission from the repeater to the goggles. And you also only get a choice of four channels for the transmission from the drone to the repeater. And this is less than what you would typically get if you had the, the system just directly connecting the goggles to the drone. Looking at the VTX output power on those three 5.2 gigahertz channels, you can see we have a bunch of different power modes, 25, 200, 500, and 700 milliwatts. And that on 25 milliwatts, we have almost exactly 25 milliwatts of output across all three channels. At 200, we have just a little bit, slightly under 200 milliwatts of output across all three channels. And then the 500 and 700 milliwatt modes are both pretty much the same, and they're outputting pretty much exactly 500 milliwatts of conducted output power. The conducted output power is split pretty much evenly between these bottom two antennas and the top two antennas are receive only. This is a very similar antenna configuration to what we see on the Avatar Goggles and the Avatar Goggles X. 
Now that we've looked at the available channels and VTX power output, that brings me neatly onto the third quirk with this system, which is that neither the Avatar FCC unlock nor the Avatar power unlock text files seem to do anything with this Walksnail repeater. And that's with the latest firmware as of the time of this recording. So this means that um, you're just limited to three 5.2 and four 5.8 gigahertz channels, uh, which is probably fine but it does mean that the VTX output power on the drone is limited to 700 milliwatts as the maximum setting. You cannot use the avatar power unlock to unlock 1000 and 1200 milliwatt modes for the drone VTX when using the repeater. And this is a bit of a limitation because this means that you're actually gonna have slightly less range and penetration when using the repeater compared to if you were standing where the repeater is and you had that power unlock text file which gave you 1200 milliwatts output on the drone VTX. So that's just something to be aware of and it's hopefully something that Walksnail will address swiftly in a firmware update. That avatar power unlock, it's important that the drone VTX is allowed to drive up to that 1200 milliwatt setting even when using the repeater, especially as if you're using the repeater, you're probably really concerned about range and penetration. Now that we've talked about VTX output power, it's time to come on to video link latency. And as you might expect, using the Walksnail system with a repeater does add some latency into the video link. And that amount of latency is variable depending on what mode you're using um, in terms of resolution and frame rate. So I've tested all the different resolutions and frame rates and collected the latency data with and without the repeater under ideal bench conditions. Let's take a look at those results now. So here are the results for the video link latency for the Avatar system. I'm testing with the Walksnail Moonlight 4K kit and the Avatar Goggles X. And then I'm also using the repeater for the tests where it says relay. Now the Avatar repeater only supports 25 megabit bandwidth. So um, the relay tests are only gonna be 25 megabit, but it does support all the different modes, 720p 100, 1080p 100, and 720p and 1080p 60. Obviously the lowest latency is gonna be achieved when you direct connect from the goggles to the drone, and you can get down to 25 milliseconds um, time to first bright pixel, and about 35 milliseconds time to first full frame in 720p 100. If you're using the relay, it's gonna be a bit slower. The fastest mode that I measured was 1080p 100, which had a latency of 38 milliseconds, time to first bright pixel, and 48 milliseconds, time to first full frame. The amount of additional latency that the repeater adds is variable depending on what mode you're in, with 1080p 100 seeming to be the fastest, 720p 100, for some reason, consistently slower, consistently more latency than 1080p 100, and the extra latency in 1080p60 and 720p60 modes is actually less than what we saw in the 1080p100 and 720p100. So it's a bit of a, a sort of scattergun approach here in terms of what we can draw out of this. In general, the repeater is gonna add anywhere from six to seven milliseconds up to maybe 13 milliseconds of extra latency. And in general, the latency is still completely acceptable in all the modes, whether or not you're using the repeater. So I don't think you need to be worried too much about latency with this system. If you're using 1080p 100 at 25 megabits with the relay, you're still getting you know 38 milliseconds time to first bright pixel, 48 milliseconds time to first full frame. That's completely reasonable, but it's not as fast as what you get if you direct connect and run 720p100, or even if you run 1080p100 and direct connect. So again, use of the repeater is gonna be situational. And if you can just stand where the repeater is, that's always a better option in terms of video link latency. And that brings us to the final quirk with this system, which is the limitation on maximum bit rate. Um, I hope this is just a firmware limitation and that Walksnail are gonna address this in future firmware updates. It is a bit of a shame that when you're using the repeater, you're limited to 25 megabit. The Walksnail system does perform quite a bit better on 50 megabits in terms of the amount of detail that you get um, in the image, particularly when you're flying fast and through um, dense foliage and stuff like that, where there's a lot of detail. The 50 megabit mode does help with that quite a bit. In the past, Walksnail have kind of released updates to the firmware that have improved features and functionality and added things like 50 megabit modes. So I'm hoping that that's gonna come for the repeater in due course. 
and hopefully they'll also be able to address some of the other quirks I've brought up in this video as well and unlock those higher output powers on the drone, things like that. So now that we've looked at all of the test results, it's time to ask who this warp snail repeater is right for. And this is a very specific piece of technology for a very specific use case. If you're someone who just flies freestyle and you're always able to go and stand somewhere where you get the best video reception for the line that you want to fly or the shot you want to get, you're not going to get much benefit from using something like this repeater. Because if you're just putting the repeater somewhere on the ground, you're probably better off just going and standing in that location rather than putting the repeater there because you'll get lower latency um, and actually probably better range and penetration because with direct connect to the drone, at least today, you can turn the drone VTX power up higher for a better connection. Where the walk snail repeater really comes into its own is if you put it on a drone and fly it up high. If you lift this repeater 100 meters into the air with another drone, with a second drone, you are going to get a much, much better view of a very wide area than you would ever get from any point on the ground. And that means that you're going to get a more consistent video link and you're going to be able to fly much further, particularly in dense environments. The only system that has been able to do this up until now are analog video repeaters, which I've seen people build by literally connecting an analog VRX to another VTX on a different channel. And that works really well if you fly that system up high on a drone, you get really great quality video even flying very far away. This walk snail repeater allows you to do the same thing with the walk snail system, and you'll probably combine it with an express LRS repeater. And I'll put a link down in the video description so that you also have a relay for your control link as well. And with those two relays up high with another drone at 100 meters, if you're doing something like flying racing tracks, you're gonna be able to cover a much, much larger area than anywhere where you could stand on the ground. And that means that you know the possibility of flying whole laps with the same drone, following the cars or bikes for really extended periods becomes possible with a high altitude relay in a way that it just wasn't possible just standing at any point on the ground. So I think that's really the, the key niche use case for this. And if you're someone who thinks that this is gonna be right for you and you are willing to put this on another drone and fly it up nice and high to get that excellent video reception, then um, there's really nothing else for any digital system that can do what this can do. So um, it's really a slam dunk from walk snail for that. And you know, assuming that some of the quirks are addressed and the firmware continues to improve, as it always does with walk snail systems, then um, this could get even more exciting going forward into the future. But as of right now, if you think that this is what you need the repeater for um, and it does fit your use case and what you're trying to do, then check out the links down in the video description to pick up your repeater today. And please, please do use those links if you possibly can, because it's it goes a huge way to helping support me make more videos like this to help you work out which products are going to be right for what you want to do. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.